Canada is quietly in the middle of one of the biggest countrywide transformations in its modern history. From coast to coast, steel is rising, tunnels are digging deeper, turbines are catching ocean winds, and futuristic cities are being sketched into skylines faster than most people even realize. What looks on the surface like construction chaos is actually a larger story. A nation re-engineering itself for the next century. And perhaps nowhere is that story more visible than in Toronto, where a new kind of subway is being born beneath the streets. The Ontario Line isn't just another transit project. It's a statement. For decades, Toronto commuters have been locked in a daily battle with congestion, bottlenecks, and endless rush hours where traveling just a few kilometers could take longer than crossing entire cities elsewhere in the world. The Ontario Line promises to rewrite that reality. Stretching 15 kilometers across the city, connecting the exhibition in the west all the way to the Ontario Science Centre in the east, the line will move up to 400,000 people every single day. But what makes it extraordinary isn't just the scale, it's the technology. The trains will be fully driverless, orchestrated by advanced digital control systems that allow them to glide seamlessly, safely, and efficiently every few minutes. Some parts will run through tunnels carved deep beneath downtown, while others soar above neighborhoods on futuristic elevated tracks, creating a layered web of movement across the city. The goal is deceptively simple. Take 28,000 daily car trips off the road, clear Toronto's clogged arteries, and push the city closer to a sustainable urban future. Yet simplicity doesn't mean small. This is a $28 billion effort involving thousands of workers years of construction, and challenges that test the limits of engineering and city planning. But if it succeeds, Toronto won't just have built a new subway. It will have redefined how a major North American city moves. Yet transit is only one part of Canada's transformation. Because while cities expand and skylines stretch upward, energy, the invisible power behind everything, is also being reimagined. And to understand that, we head to the shores of Lake Huron, where one of the largest nuclear power plants on Earth is being rebuilt piece by piece. Bruce Power already produces nearly a third of Ontario's electricity. But instead of letting aging reactors fade into retirement, Canada is investing $13 billion to completely refurbish the facility, extending its life for decades. Engineers are replacing core components with materials designed to withstand extreme heat, radiation, and time. Robotic arms, guided by high-precision AI, perform work far too hazardous for humans. And when this massive renewal is complete, the impact will be enormous. Clean, consistent power, equivalent to removing 5 million cars worth of emissions from the atmosphere. It's the kind of project that doesn't make flashy headlines, but it quietly defines the future more than almost anything else. Stable power means thriving industries stable cities, and a grid strong enough to support the electrification wave already sweeping the world. Meanwhile, just west of Toronto, another gateway is preparing for the future. Toronto Pearson International Airport, notorious for pack terminals and long lines, is being reshaped to handle more than 65 million passengers a year. The expansion includes smarter check-in systems, redesigned arrivals, and infrastructure built not just for today's travel chaos, but for decades of constant growth. A new mega-terminal will streamline the flow of international passengers, improve luggage handling, and bring digital automation directly into the travel process. The most impressive part isn't the size, it's how construction is being done while keeping one of the busiest airports on the continent operating at full force. It's like renovating a house while the family is still living in it, except the house is the size of a small city and the family is millions of travelers moving non-stop. But to see the boldest play in Canada's clean energy strategy, we have to leave the city and head to the Atlantic. Newfoundland and Labrador have always been defined by the wind, the kind that howls across cliffs, roars over open ocean, and shapes the coastline itself. Now that wind is about to power one of the world's largest renewable megaprojects. The Newfoundland Wind Energy Initiative will deploy over 300 massive turbines generating more than four gigawatts of clean power. But instead of just feeding electricity into local grids, this project is going one step further, using that electricity to produce green hydrogen, a clean fuel that could power ships, factories, and entire cities without burning carbon at all. Some of the turbines will even float offshore, 
anchored to deep ocean waters where winds are stronger and more consistent. Floating wind is considered one of the next breakthroughs in global energy, and Canada is moving to the front of that race. And while the winds turn in the east, on the ground in Ontario, the Geo Transit Rail Network is undergoing a $21 billion modernization that will electrify trains, add 200 plus kilometers of new track, and dramatically increase frequency. For the first time, commuters won't need to plan their day around train schedules. The trains will simply come. Every 15 minutes, every direction, every day. It's the type of convenience usually reserved for major European transit systems. And now, it's being built here. But Canada isn't only looking forward, it's also rewriting its past. In Montreal, one of the country's most iconic symbols, the Olympic Stadium, is being reborn after decades of neglect and costly repairs. The stadium once stood as a representation of ambition and futurism, then slowly decayed into a cautionary tale. Now, it's receiving an $870 million transformation, including a new roof and redesigned public spaces intended to turn the area into a thriving cultural and recreational hub. It's not just a renovation, it's a redemption arc for a landmark that once symbolized bold dreams and now has the chance to symbolize resilience. Across the country, similar stories unfold. The Samuel de Champlain Bridge in Montreal, a stunning cable-stayed structure made from ultra-durable materials, was designed to last a century. The Regina Bypass in Saskatchewan re-engineered trade and travel across the prairies with wildlife corridors built right into its design. And in Vancouver, the Oak Ridge redevelopment is turning a simple shopping mall into a self-powered, walkable mini-city of the future, complete with green rooftops, cultural spaces, and housing integrated into a sustainable urban ecosystem. And then there's the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion, one of the most debated mega-projects in the country. Whether seen as a strategic economic lifeline or a step backward in environmental progress, one thing is undisputed. It will reshape Canada's position in global energy markets for decades to come. With real-time monitoring systems and some of the most stringent safety technology ever used in pipeline engineering, it represents the complicated balance between economic growth and environmental responsibility, a tension defining the world today. When viewed one by one, these projects look like isolated efforts, built for different purposes in different regions by different governments. But when you look closer, a pattern emerges. Canada is building not for today, but for the next 50 years. It's preparing for population growth, electrification, climate resilience, and a new era of urban life. These projects are the scaffolding of a future where cities are connected, energy is cleaner, and movement is easier. And that is the real story. Canada is constructing not just buildings, rail systems, and bridges. It is constructing identity, capability, and momentum. Piece by piece, steel by steel, turbine by turbine, the future is rising. Canada's future is being built right now, piece by piece, and the story is only getting started. If you want to follow how these mega projects unfold, make sure to subscribe. There's a lot more to explore.